Hello, everyone. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us on the Live Unreal with Glover You podcast, where every week, Jeff Glover will dive deep into the questions that you are asking. He understands the challenges you are facing on a day-to-day basis because he still works every day on the front lines of real estate, with him and his team closing over 1,000 homes per year. In today's episode, Jeff will share with you his story behind Glover You. You will learn from Jeff his story on how it all started and why Jeff is doing what he's doing today. Now let's hear from Jeff Glover. We had a little cocktail party for all of our Glover U clients at the Hotel Indigo. And I was having a good conversation with Christy Smith and Dan Beer. And so wherever you guys are, you're getting the credit for this because it was your idea. And of course, even though we've spent the last however many weeks writing notes of what I was gonna say in the first session, we completely are throwing those out based on the conversation I had last night. The conversation I had last night was, you know, obviously, Jeff, you're, you're pretty, you're still considered newer to the circuit, even though, believe it or not, I've been doing this 17 years. You're still kind of newer to the circuit. Uh, you know, I had this opinion of you, and I really thought this, and, and I didn't really know much about you. And so, have you ever actually shared your story? Well, I probably have, uh, you know, either online or through a, a call that was being recorded or something like that but I never really have in an audience size like this. So they thought it would be a good idea. Jeff, hey, the, the, they need to know this backstory. I started sharing some of the stuff, which I didn't think was that great. And, and you know, their eyes lit up like, gosh, I, I didn't realize that. That's, that's really cool. I now understand why you do what you do. You know, I'm very direct. I'm the, I was telling our coach, we had a coaches meeting this morning. And, and I, I, my opinion is I'd rather come to an event like this and know that I'm there for for two and a half days and figure out how many hours there are each one of those days and get as much content as I can from an event like this. That's that's how I am as an agent, right? I don't like all this fluff and the entertaining and the funny and the silliness and all that. I mean, you'll, you know, that, that's just not my style. So because that's not my style as an audience member, because obviously I have my agent hat on like you do as well, our, our whole thing the last two and a half years or so since we've been doing this has been pack as much content as we can into a little bit amount of time as possible. So that's probably why I've never shared any of the story. So I'm going to just spend the next 10 minutes or 12 minutes or so. It's going to be a little bit of an abbreviated story, but I want to make sure you guys know, uh, you know my background and, and where I'm coming from and why we're doing what we're doing today. And for those of you that are like me and you don't like the fluff and you like the content, we're gonna have some content as soon as I get off stage. So we'll get to that in a second. So uh, my journey actually started, uh, I would say when I, when I think of sales and business, um, when I was 15 years old, I, was, uh, I, I had transferred essentially from a, a uh, blue collar, very blue collar, borderline probably you know, poor area of Michigan to a very upscale area of Michigan. Uh, my parents wanted me to go to a better school system. And so my parents were divorced. And um, my, my dad couldn't af- he want- they wanted me to get into a nice school system, but they couldn't afford a nice house in this area. So uh, my dad, for, for the purpose of getting me into a better school system, bought a trailer in a trailer park and said, this is a way, this particular school system, which is like top five in the state, this is how we can get you into the school system. And so I kind of grew up like this kid from the, the, the countryside, you know, I lived, I lived on a dirt road uh, before that. And, uh, you know, again, went to, went to school where everyone aspired to be auto mechanics and HVAC and they had all these vocational programs and everything, which there's nothing wrong with that. That was just that at the school I was at, nobody was inspired to go to college. It was everyone's going to go get a job working for Ford or something like that on the line. So. I got into this school system and I got picked on a lot because I was the kid that, you know, lived in a trailer park, which, you know, when you're, I'll never forget, it was in my art class. Um, Everyone was talking about what neighborhood they lived in because, you know, when you live in a high-end neighborhood or in a high-end area and your parents have money, everyone likes to talk about it in high school. And, you know, so I I was a little shy, I'll never forget. I said, oh, I live in, I live in, I didn't want to tell them where I live. So I, you know, they were saying their neighborhoods and all this. I said, I live in Highland Hills Estates. You know, like proud. Oh, I live in Highland Hills Estates. Real, real proud. Oh, Highland Hills, I've never heard of that. So here I'm thinking, oh gosh, they're gonna start pushing and now I'm gonna have to dig a little deeper. So I'm like, oh, it's, it's just right off Grand River over by Haggerty. Yeah, where are you guys from? You know, I'm trying to like change the subject and finally it got to the, oh, isn't there a trailer park back there? 
Yeah, yeah, that's where I live. Yeah, that, that's it. Oh, wow, he lives in a trailer. So I was in a situation where everyone, you know, was given probably $1,000 a year for their school clothes, and I was getting 100 bucks. And I had to get, a, you know, go through the, the first part of the school year with 100 bucks. So that really motivated me to say, you know what, uh, if it is to be, it is up to me type of thing. And I want to have all these things that these kids have. You know, I was in 10th uh, grade at the time. I, want, I transferred from the, from the poor, uh, below average school district to, to this particular school district when I was in ninth grade, which that alone is, you know, making new high school friends. I mean, I'm an outsider to begin with. So um, uh, essentially, I, I said, you know what, I got to figure out a way to live the life that these kids are living because I know I'm not going to get it in my current situation. You know, I can't rely on my current situation to give me the life that they have. So uh, I went and got a job uh, at Circuit City. If you guys remember Circuit City stores, uh, they're like the competitor to Best Buy. They're not around anymore. Um, and, and at Circuit City, it, it was, it's commissioned salespeople. That was the difference between Circuit City and Best Buy. Circuit City was commissioned salespeople. So when I was 15 years old, which is the legal age that you can get a job in Michigan, I went and applied and got hired. And they taught me some basic sales skills. And I ended up becoming the number one salesperson in the state of Michigan for Circuit City. So I was 16 years old and I got this award. I was 127 in the company. There was maybe 20,000 associates. By the way, I was only allowed to work 18 hours a week because state law, when you're 15, you can't work more than 18 hours. So I was number one in the state working 18 hours a week at 15 years old selling TVs and speakers and all this other stuff. So I'll never forget, my sister's in the room somewhere, I won this, this sales conference award. And you know the top 200 people in the company get to go down to the Gaylord Palms Resort in Florida. And uh, you know it was a big to-do for all their top salespeople. Well, at 16 years old, which is the year you know I won it that year, at 16 years old, uh, and it includes a, a, a guest, me and a guest, well, uh, at 16, I wasn't going to bring my 10th grade girlfriend. I mean, that probably wasn't going to fly. So, and I definitely didn't want to go with my mom. So I, the next best thing was my sister, who at the time was 21 and, and I was 16. So it worked out perfectly because, we, you know, there's, there's a lot more to that story, but we ended up getting in a lot of places that we probably shouldn't have because we argued that, well, if she's 21, I mean, I'm obviously here in a suit. I mean, I, I look older than her at the time. So uh, we had some fun down to Florida and that was that. Was that. So I moved on from Circuit City to a, a furniture chain because actually at the time I was thinking, you know what, I like the sales stuff. You know, I got all these plaques and I'm a, I'm a 10th grade going into 11th grade. I kind of like the sales thing. I think this is going to be my gig. And so um, I decided that I wanted to sell cars because I thought that that was like the, the, the thing. That's it, right? You're 10th, 11th grade, you don't know. So I want to go sell cars. Well, I went to dealerships, walking into dealerships with my plaques, you know, number one in Michigan, number 127 in, in the country, and all these little certificates, and hey, I know I'm young, but would you consider hiring me? Well, believe it or not, none of them would actually hire me. And the reason for that is because back then, they didn't have the hours that they have today, where they work nights and weekends. I mean, it was like a Monday through Friday, nine to five car dealership deal. So none of them would hire me. So then I walked into a furniture store uh, called Art Van Furniture. Many of you from Michigan or Chicago will know that. And uh, I was in, in 11th grade at the time. Same thing. I walked into my, with my plaques. By the way, how coincidental to the first part of the story. I walk into the, the no, I grew up, the, the wealthier neighborhood, by the way, was Novi. So I go into the Novi store. Novi store wanted nothing to do with me. All right, they're like, no way, you're too young. You know, I got my plaques, you got, it's, they got this full-time program, you're never gonna be able to do it, we don't hire part-time. So then I go down to my roots, right? I go down to the Westland store. For those of you in Michigan know the difference between Novi and Westland. And the Westland store is like, come on in, yeah, we'll bring you right on the spot. I remember the store manager actually, I was turned down at the desk and the store manager, Eddie Blaine, who's a mentor of mine today, still to this day, chased me down and said, get back here, get back here. And took me back into the office and said, what do you wanna do? So they started me in the clearance center at Art Van because at, at, at Art Van, you have to go through a 30-day Monday through Friday, nine to five training program. It was actually a pretty good program. Well, I was still in high school. I was in 11th grade, so I couldn't take that time off of work. So they said, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to put you in the back clearance center, which, okay, I'm, I'm in already an area that was more depressed than the area that I was from, and now you're putting me in the clearance center, which is even more depressing. So this should be fun. So I'm in the clearance center, and they said, you got two jobs. What is that? 
Every customer that comes back here, your responsibility is to sell them something in the clearance center or go take them to the main floor and sell them on why they should buy you know, a Sealy mattress versus a King Coil, right? King Coil's in the clearance center, ceilings out there. Okay, what else? We're going to give you this book, and this book is a stack of layaways. And these are people, you know, layaway was big back then, Westlands, a middle blue collar city. Layaways were popular. This is the, these are all the layaways of the people, of the salespeople that are no longer with the company. If you can convince these people to come in and pay off their furniture, we'll put you on the deal. So here I am in the back clearance center. By the way, how you get customers in the clearance center is simple because every single customer, you want the, guy, you want the salespeople to leave you alone at Art Van, just tell them you're going to the clearance center because that's what happens. All the people that were dropped by the salespeople came back to the clearance center. So they were there for me to pick up. You know, the sofas back there are like $2.99 out on the floor, they're $11.99. So I'm back there in the clearance center. They say, we're gonna give you the stack and when things are slow, we want you to go over to that call station, stand at that call station, and we want you to call these layaways and convince them to come in and pay off their furniture. You can convince them to come pay off their furniture, we put you on the deal. That first month at Art Van, standing in the back, making prospecting call after prospecting call, convincing people to come in and pay off their furniture, taking people from the clearance center out into the store, not taking a single up. So for any of you that know retail sales, ups are where you make your money. It's an up system, right? You go in line and then you, you get to greet customers. Not taking a single up, I finished number three in the store that first month on the floor. Why is that? Because while everyone else was kind of sitting around and waiting for people to walk in the store, the store manager gave me an opportunity to prospect for business, which is not common in the furniture industry. So I convinced these people to come in and pay off their layaways and I got put on those transactions, which then of course led to me making money selling furniture. And then of course, I ended up number five in the company as a senior in high school. And somebody in the, in the store said, you know what? Obviously you're a natural salesperson, you really ought to consider selling real estate. Okay, well, how old do you have to be to sell, sell real estate? Well, obviously in most states it's 18. So I waited, as soon as I turned 18, I signed up for classes and I got my license. My first year in the business at 19 years old, I sold 34 homes. Uh, going into my second year, I was on track to sell 40 homes when I got a call from a, a current mentor, still to this day, Kathy Schweitzer. And Kathy says, Jeff, we, we see what you accomplished in your first 18 months. Uh, we'd like to talk to you about maybe possibly coming and working with us. So I met with Kathy and Paul Schweitzer. Uh, I still you know, look up to them and keep in contact with them. And they said, okay, what, what is it that you wanna do in this business? They said, well, here's what I don't understand. I'm 18 years old and I have people in the cubicle across from me that are two or three times my age. I don't even own a home and I'm selling more homes than they are. Why, you know, I, what's the difference? Well, Jeff, you learn, you know, you learn sales early. Obviously, you were using scripts. I was prospecting when I got into the business right away because I didn't know any better. I was used to that at Art Van and, and, and the sales before that. I said, well, there has to be a way to where we can take what I've done and share it with agents at your company. This was a 16 office company, 600 agents. There has to be a way I, I know where I'm, where, I'm, where I'm at and what's going on where I'm at. There has to be a way to get this out. And so what I'd like to do, if it's okay with you, I'd like to take on your most failing office and I want to see if what I've applied the last 18 months, I can teach, coach, and train these agents to do and turn that office around. So they gave me that opportunity at 20 years old. I was running a real estate office that had six, room for 60 agents. It had 15 agents currently working at it because all of the, the previous broker left and opened his own company and never went with them. They're like, here you go, good luck. They were gonna close it anyways. So after 18 months, I turned the office around. We're up over 50, 60 agents. Two years in a row, we're the, the fastest growing office with the company and they give me a promotion to director of training and recruiting. I'm 22 years old, 23 years old at this time. And it was that moment when I said, you know what, my calling is helping people see something in themselves that they don't see. Because the reality is I looked out at every single one. We'd gather around the training room, I'll never forget. It was, it was no windows, it was inside, it was a long conference room. And these people would come in um, with, with, in their mind, no chance that they can succeed. No chance that I can do what Jeff did or no chance I can do what Bob did. 
And it was at that moment where I said, you know what, it's my job in this industry to help people to see things in themselves that they can't see. And so I went on to, of course, uh, having a good management career with, with Cobalt Banker Schweitzer, and then I got back into real estate in 2009. When I say back into real estate, I, I stepped away from management and, and started selling real estate again full time. And so the mission at that moment was I have to become so attractive through my personal production that people want to be a part of what I'm doing. And then once people want to be a part of what I'm doing, then I need to train them and turn them into success stories. And if I can turn the other people into success stories, then there's a much better chance that people are going to want to listen to what I have to say. And so if you're wondering where this whole Glover U thing came about, it started back then. And still to this day, when I think about the industry, sure, I love selling real estate, but honestly, at this point, I only do it so that way I can say I'm on the ground with you. You'll hear me say that like two dozen times. You'll get annoyed of it this week. But I, I do it because I need to be credible in the industry for you. The reality is, is what I really enjoy is working with you guys to see things in yourself that you don't see. Because I know that the, the Schweitzers took a chance on me and they help, that, they help bring that out of me. And, and that's my job for you guys for life. So as long as I'm up here and as long as you're willing to come join us and attend these events, that's what I'm going to be doing. Thank you for taking your time to join Jeff today on the Live Unreal with Glover U podcast. To get started on having an unreal business, take the real estate self-assessment. After you complete the assessment, a member of Glover U will get on a call with you to create an action plan to improve your score. Go to www.gloveru.com self. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Search for Live Unreal with Glover U on iTunes, Podbean, or Spotify and subscribe today. Until next time, remember, it's my job in this industry to help people to see in themselves what they can't see.